Hello dear viewer, today's Skyrim build is closely based off of Aragorn. Mods and perks were chosen carefully to reflect the fighting style and story arc of this iconic character, and the resulting playstyle offers a broad set of combat options from duelist-like combat against stronger foes, to sweeping through hordes of weaker ones, to sneaking and crowd controlling with your bow and enchantments, to leading and healing your followers. I am particularly proud of how I handled switching between different kinds of weapons, which seems necessary if you want to resemble the movie Aragorn at least. He used a bastard sword, meaning that he could hold it in one hand or both. Such weapons don't really exist in Skyrim, but with Isilmiral's Lord of the Rings weapons mod, you can have Unreal in two versions. Making a build switching from the one-handed to two-handed weapon is a little bit daunting for me because it always feels like wasting perk points, but here with a collection of Summermist enchantments I think I managed to make them all one-handed Unreal, two-handed Unreal and bow uh, support each other quite well. Perking both weapon skills in Vokri can actually be rather fun because you get many additional effects to your power attacks. You can disarm enemies with one-handed power attacks, sweep against multiple targets in two-handed and paralyze and reduce incoming damage and so on. Well, actually most of this you can do in vanilla, but you can do it much more efficiently in Vokri. For our one-handed combat stance, we will also utilize the most powerful block perk, the Torch Bash. And I'm not even kidding, with good archery, Torch Bashing is amazing. More on that later. The playthrough goes through two distinct phases. First you follow the path of a ranger, investing in sneak, archery, one-handed and alchemy, and go under the guide of the Shadowstone. Once you accrue fame around the holds of Skyrim and reveal yourself as a candidate for the High King, you develop your two-handed skills more. Find the Ethereal Crown so you can now be guided by both the Warrior and the Ritual. It is Andromeda's ritual so you don't exactly raise zombies, but rather call upon the ghosts of the slain warriors of Skyrim to join your side in your final battle against Alduin or any other Dark Lord of your choosing. Harkon for for instance, wants to cover everything in darkness. Seems dark lordy enough. For now, let's go through mods. There's quite a few if you want to follow my fashion sense, especially. So our main armor is going to be Ethelian Ranger's armor. Yes, I know Aragorn was a different kind of a ranger, but this just looks so very middle earthy. And before you say it breaks immersion because it has a tree from a different universe on it, keep in mind that there is a city in Skyrim with its own sacred dead tree. Maybe this ranger is very much into protecting that city. Realistic armor mod has a cool chainmail armor, Lord Nordic chainmail, which I used in the late game after getting the crown and the ritual as my royal mail. And then we have the two Andrils from Isilmiriel's Lord of the Rings weapons collection. The two-handed version is actually considerably faster than two-handed swords, so this one affects gameplay, not just the fashion sense. For the gameplay altering mods, we need Vokri, Summer Mist, and Andromeda Standing Stones. These three are essential and work together well, as we are going to need quite a few Summer Mist enchantments, which may not be too easy to find, I would also recommend a small addition called Summer Mist Guaranteed Locations, which adds pretty much every Summer Mist enchantment to a fixed location somewhere in Skyrim. It is a very small mod, but created by a very promising, dashing and handsome modder. Furthermore, we need honed metal to order the enchantments to be placed on our weapons. Enchanting it yourself and hunting for souls doesn't really suit Aragorn, and we already are spread thin between many skills. Without honed metal, you are going to need at least 4 perks in enchanting and therefore may have to play beyond level 50 to complete the build. To heal our followers and friends with potions we make, we need a mod called Field Medic. It's great, it's remarkable, and it fits, and it works, it's, it's wonderful. And finally, uh, for the roleplay reasons and having uh, something to feel like we actually become uh, the King of Skyrim, I would suggest using the Become High King of Skyrim Immersive Edition mod. And you can start playing with it after you are a Thane in every hold, for example, after you reach 
a major milestone in your playthrough. One final note before we go further, I already have a ranger build very loosely based on Aragorn, very very loosely and it is OP as hell, not that this one isn't, but that one is even more because it uses Thunder Child. And you may wanna to, you may wanna check it out, it's the ranger of High Hrothgar and the link should be in the description. So now is the time for a little bit of backstory and we will move on to the gameplay details after this. The life of a ranger is tough, but it feels like home to you. You've never had anything else. Born as a son of a ranger of Gilder Green, traversing the wilds of Skyrim, protecting the travelers and scouting the land in search of danger have been your main task since you were able to wield a weapon. Your father taught you everything you needed, but he kept one crucial piece of knowledge for the time you reach adulthood. One evening, after clearing out a Draugr-infested ruin, he told you your family history. Yours is the lost line of the High Kings of Skyrim, related to the Septims themselves through Potema and Pelagius. The family also had ancient ties to the highest nobility of High Rock, and as such it has a claim to almost every single human kingdom in Tamriel. Your ancestors went into hiding when the madness of Pelagius made them unwanted. They protected Skyrim and High Rock in the trials of the Oblivion Crisis, but never revealed themselves to the people. It was foretold, however, that your family will get a chance to clear its name and rise again as great rulers of Tamriel. When the black wings rise in the east, when the sun itself will be wounded by Akatosh, the motherland of all men will be torn by fratricide, and the soul of Tiber will once again decide the fate of Tamriel. The time, your father said, was near. The task, he said, will befall to you. You must first show yourself as a hero, travel from hold to hold and prove yourself to the people there. If you succeed, you shall forge a new crown and raise your claim to the throne of Skyrim. It will not be easy, but your father was somehow mysteriously convinced you can do it. Right, now for the stones and the race and such such. First, the attribute spread looks uh, like this. Early on, say before level 20, you might need a more even spread, but as you progress, you will accrue uh, so many means of regenerating stamina, putting more points in it will become a waste of level ups. For the race, I choose a Breton, given the backstory, maybe a Nord would be more suitable, but honestly, at this point, Tiber Septim's descendants could be of almost any race, and the Breton magic resistance is too good to ignore in this case, as we won't have many enchantment slots for the resistances. And for the stone, as mentioned before, early in the game we go for Andromeda's Shadow Stone to increase our sneak attack damage slightly and, much more importantly, the combat speed. After you prove yourself to the people of Skyrim by, for example, becoming a Thane in each hold and or becoming the Harbinger of the Companions, we will forge ourselves the Ethereal Crown and use the combo of Warrior and the Ritual. The Ritual should be stored in the crown so we can toggle the vile army of Oathbreakers on and off whenever you want to. So for our main skills we need two-handed, one-handed archery, block, light armor and sneak. Very few perk points will go in smithing, even with honed metal you will still need at least one perk there to forge Andril and one or two perks in uh, alchemy. The white selection of skills can only work as well as it does because of how the current version of Vokli handles mastery perks, i.e. it requires just one per skill. I'm still not sure how to feel about it. It's 
it seems like uh, creating a jack of all trades is awfully easy now. Some could say it's too easy. Nevertheless, uh, let's continue. In two handed, go up uh, the rightmost side up to sweep and ignore the charge perks. Uh, they don't really fit Aragorn's composed and efficient fighting style, I don't think. Although he does have this one scene in Helm's Deep, well, up to you, I guess. For perk point efficiency, they should be ignored. In the Swords branch, we only need Coup de Gras, as it lets you deal enormous damage to weakened enemies as well as drop uh, them to the ground if they somehow survive this ultimate strike. As two-handed will be Aragorn's more offensive combat style, there is no need to take the defensive sword perks here. That we will take in one-handed. Speaking of which, here is the list of one-handed perks. We actually want to have both ranks of the defensive overpowering assault perk to reduce the incoming damage by 15%. We also need everything in the rightmost branch up to disarming slash, again ignoring the charge perk. A lot of perks were taken in the block tree and it's really not my fault that Vokri makes most of them so darn useful and even without the shield. First and foremost you need your torch bash and weapon block. These two will correspond with both your two-handed and your one-handed combat stances. Torch bash will send the living enemies running in fear. Not only is it fun, not only does it do ongoing fire damage, but with decent archery it basically means that whoever is poked with your torch is dead in a few seconds. So you bash, they start running away, you take out your bow, you aim preferably in slow motion and you shoot them. Sometimes they may hide of course Maybe, maybe a little bit, a little bit uh, finicky, but it, uh, generally it works uh, most of the time. And Dragon Tail is so obviously awesome, as it gives you a chance to knock enemies down when you bash to interrupt a power attack. And this pairs very well with Coup de Gras perk from the two-handed skill, as you will have the ability to knock them down when attacking as well as when bashing. The perk choice in archery is tailored completely for crowd control and combat archery, so the movement speed, for instance, with your weapon drawn is almost a necessity, so we don't lose our light armor bonuses to Easily. Gore will interrupt power attacks and send your enemies away, which is much easier to execute with both ranks of steady hand unlocked. And pinning shot will slow your enemies down. These perks will make you shine in open combat with yet another weapon as well as open and facilitate the aforementioned combo with, with Torch Bash. Aragorn doesn't use his bone much in the movies, but I believe it is mentioned in the books more than once that the Rangers of the North were excellent archers. Sneak archery wouldn't really synergize with our other combat skills, so combat archery it is, especially that this is one of the best parts of Vokri, I think. The perk choice in Light Armor gave me a little bit of a headache. I wanted the matching set because it only requires three pieces of matching armor, which means I can use the Predator's Grace boots with my Ranger armor and still get the bonus. Usually I would skip the Keen Sense perk in this case, but since I wanted to use the Ethereal Crown later in the game, I needed the Keen Senses too. Luckily, with a skilled smith, uh, be it yourself or someone whose services you employ with Honed Metal, uh, should allow you to get a near maximum armor rating in both armor sets. Obviously, you want agility and windrunner perks on the right hand side as they allow you to avoid damage altogether and they combine well with the shadow stone. In smithing, you have to take at least the steel smithing perk to craft your sword. If you struggle with the AR, why not take armor padding too? And with high skill value and some blacksmith's elixir, they can make a considerable difference. 175 points in my case, to be exact, with some smithing gear and the elixir. I also took a few perks in alchemy mainly for roleplay reasons, as Aragorn should know the basics at least of natural healing, and the physician perk comes in handy with the field medic mod. Benefactor could be useful, but overall not necessary. Healing yourself with good potions uh, may be very vital early in the game for this character, as we don't use restoration. If you don't want to use honed metal, you may need a few perks in enchanting, unfortunately, mainly the weapon and armor enchanter perks. Finally, the mastery perk in Sneak will be most useful once you have the Predator's Grace boots. The boots will muffle your movement completely, so no need to do it with perks, and the Shadow Stone will give you a little bit of a boost to your sneak kills. Now for the items and enchantments. 
yes, we already mentioned Ethereal Crown and Predator's Grace. These are the only pre-enchanted things you will need to obtain. The rest you will order through Honed Metal Mechanics or craft them yourself. On your two-handed Andril, put the Halt Regeneration Summer Mist Enchantment. It prevents Stamina and Magicka Regeneration for a few seconds, which is great, because on the one-handed Andril we will put the Vanilla Damage Stamina Enchantment. This means you'll have an incentive to change your grip, so to say, mid-combat, depleting stamina of the strongest warriors and then forcing it to stay low with your two-handed strikes. Or alternatively, you can open combat with multiple enemies with two-handed sweep, preventing the regeneration of a whole bunch of them, and then change to one-handed to focus on the most menacing ones. On your bow, and I choose an early game Imperial bow, because it just looks right and maximizing damage is by no means vital to this combat style, so on your Imperial bow I put the clumsy enchantment from Summer Mist, which causes the enemies to stagger whenever they attempt a power attack. These three weapons offer you an amazing control over the battlefield, because not only you are limiting your enemies' uh, chances to power attack against you by depleting their stamina. Not only you make them fail at power attacks by making them clumsy, but also even if they manage to power attack, you have a whole array of options to use their power attacks against them with your block and archery perks. This is really fun and really makes you feel like a master in dueling and sword fight. Moreover, preventing magicka regeneration can be very useful against dragons and mages, and uh, being a Breton of course helps against them too. And we will further improve this aspect of the build by the reactive barrier enchantment placed on your chest piece, which should give you between 20 and 30% resistance to an element whenever you are struck by that element. So it's a wonderful solution for not being able to put elemental resistances anywhere. And we need to fortify two combat skills at least, so that's handy. Yes, fortify your one-handed with a necklace and two-handed with your gloves or vice versa, and put fortify health on your ranger cape. Stamina does not need much fortification with uh, the finished build because Predator's Grace and Light Armor perks will give you an insane regeneration rate, so worst case you will need literally a second to catch your breath before resuming your power attacks. After you prove yourself to the people of Skyrim you may want to switch to a more leadership oriented enchantment on your chest piece and I went for a long Nordic chainmail from Realistic Armor with the Spirit of Life enchantment from Summer Mist. It heals your followers passively and late in the game it can get a rather insane range on that. Not really something that is necessary for the playstyle, I don't think, mostly a roleplay decision on my part to be honest. Finally, on your ring put the Link Health and Stamina enchantment from Summer Mist. This will give you a little boon to your stamina value as well as little edge to your health, which in this particular case seems much more useful than fortifying just your stamina or just your health. Uh, as again, we don't have enough enchantment slots here, just that's that's the problem. I used no shouts and no spells or any other powers with this character. The Star of the West, Warrior Stone power may be a good idea to have in tight spots and is very fittingly named for Aragorn, since this character is likely, I think, to deal with the main quest, a marked for death and unrelenting force are the usual warrior's best friends, and they will definitely work with this build. I don't think there is a follower who has a mission to destroy an ancient ring of evil, but there are some mods giving you followers who have their own adventures and tasks with which you can help. Maybe, maybe, maybe Vilia can serve as a little bit of a Frodo or an Arwen or a little bit of both. And with that said, the build is done and dusted. It feels like Aragorn, it does everything I wanted him to do and under 50 levels and I'm rather happy now. Let me uh, know what you think, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, smash the bells and all the things you should do on YouTube if you like somebody uh, there. Most importantly, have fun and come back for more. We will see each other again. Uh, bye bye. Bye.